Okay, first things first, let me start out with a disclaimer and tell you exactly who this video is for, right? Uh, this video is for a normal, just portrait photographer, just an everyday practical comparison between image quality on two lenses. This video is not about low light performance, right? For those of you concert photographers out there who need to gather more light and do things just with a lot of light, right? The Canon wins, like no competition. The Canon wins, just buy the Canon. This is not comparing low light performance. So just know that I am comparing two lenses, image quality, not low light performance, right? If you're a normal photographer and you shoot mostly in non-dark settings, this is the video for you, right? All I'm doing is comparing the image quality of these two lenses, not the low light performance. I'm not saying the Rokinon is bad at low light performance. It's not but the Canon is clearly better. So hopefully those low light photographers out there are going to appreciate that I just saved 20 minutes of your life up front and you can show your appreciation by, you know, hitting that sub button if you want to or going to the channel and checking out whatever else may interest you, right? Uh, but for the rest of you, let's get to it. What the heck is up, YouTubes? And welcome to the what should I buy your reviews sure let's roll with it it's uh it's a review for all you humpty dumpties out there that are kind of on the fence about what you should spend your hard-earned money on so first off nothing about this is sponsored at all right i bought these lenses with my own money and i'm an intern who peels bananas for smoothie king so it took me about eight years and four months to earn the money to buy these bad boys and uh, even though that was clearly a lie or a joke, if you want to be more accurate, just know that this is an honest review. So today we have an age old showdown between a three figure lens and a four figure lens. And if you're watching this, my guess is you're probably wondering how much more value are you going to get if you spend three or four times the money. So, only one way to find out. All right, so today we have got the Rokinon 85 millimeter 1.4. At the uh, time of this video, is priced a little under $500 new on Amazon for this lens right here. Or around 400 used in excellent condition right now on a site like uh, MPB. And then we also have the Canon 85 millimeter 1.2 version two, right? Which this one is significantly more dollars, about 2000 new and anywhere from 800 to a thousand dollars on the used market, right? And, and there's reasons to buy both of these lenses. And by the end, I'm going to tell you exactly who should buy this lens and who should buy this lens. So let's get into it, shall we? We will start with the King, the Canon 85 millimeter 1.2. So the basic specs on this lens, obviously 85 millimeters. On APS-C, that is a 136 millimeter equivalent, I believe. Um, maximum aperture of 1.2. Ooh, that's a pretty piece of glass right there. Minimum aperture of uh, f16. Uh, the sharpest results for this lens are usually around f4. Uh, one thing I will say about this is it is like a the electronic manual focus. So even though I switch it. If you can see that right there, I switch it from autofocus to manual focus. That doesn't actually let me focus it. It has to be electronically connected to the camera. It's a focus by wire type of thing. The closest focused is about 0.95 meters, a little over three feet, um, which it's 85 millimeter. You know, you're going to be taking pictures of people several feet away. That's usually not a problem. Uh, filter size, 72 millimeters. Weight, 2.3 this is a hefty, 
hefty piece of glass right here. It is such a beautiful beast of a, of a lens. So, um, it is fully weather sealed, um, autofocus speed. Now that's one thing to talk about with these wide aperture lenses is the autofocus speed, right? So it's slower than what you're used to, right? This thing has a tiny, tiny, tiny depth of field wide open. So in order to be able to focus and get that focus tack sharp, that is a, uh, that's a feat. So it, it is a little slower than most lenses because most lenses are not doing what this lens does. You'll find that with pretty much any, uh, any lens that has a uh, super shallow depth of field, super fast, as they say, f1.2 f1.4 the types of things you're going to want lenses like this for you probably already know i don't need to be telling you this low light stuff weddings portraiture all that fun stuff so anyway let me talk about the rokinon and then we'll just compare the two let's take some photos right all right so now we got this fella right here the budget king is what i'll call him at the 85 millimeters let's pop this hood off so this fella the rokinon 85 millimeter 1.4 and to give you an idea of the difference between a 1.4 and a 1.2 sounds like a tiny little difference but it is not the amount of light that gets let in let's look at this up top here that is i would say twice as big a 1.4 opening to a 1.2 opening that is substantial. On the front end, I think they're relatively similar. The 1.4 is a 1.4 over here, 1.2 over here. But yeah, it isn't just a 0.2. That, that number does not do justice to how much of a difference there is as far as letting light in on this lens. But I digress. Let's talk about the Rokin on here. So, Again, 85 millimeter, uh, 1.4. So uh, a 136 equivalent on an APS-C sensor. Um, this one's nine elements in seven groups, if you care about that stuff. Aperture range 1.4 all the way up to F16. Um, it's this one, I would say it gets really sharp up around 2.8 and its peak sharpness is the same as the king which is around f4 filter size 77 millimeters it is also weather sealed uh, and the autofocus again somewhat slow but it's pretty smooth uh, it's got some light clicking i mean i don't think any normal person would notice that uh, focus accuracy is generally pretty good from my experience so anyway I'll put the specs for both lenses up on the screen right now. And uh, you can pause the video and take a look at these specs if you would like, if that helps you. I'm really not the guy that's gonna give you every single scientific detail about everything of these lenses. There are plenty and plenty of YouTube videos on anything in the earth so again more than welcome to go find a super in-depth detail view what i am here to do is to tell you which one of these you should buy and why so let's talk about the people who are watching this and why you might be comparing these two lenses all right so the way i figure it there are only two types of people watching a video that would compare these two lenses one you either have the money to buy the better and more expensive lens but for a number of reasons you want to know if you can get away with buying the cheaper lens um and uh would anybody be able to tell from the image quality or the other person that i figure might be watching this is you do not have the money to buy this bad boy and you're trying to find out what lenses are comparable to the king since that's probably the lens you want now of course that may not be the case for everyone watching this somebody out there may just be wasting time and for you i say what's up how you doing but for the rest of you 
Whatever the case may be that you are watching a video comparing these two lenses, let's just run through the real world pros and cons of these two lenses from a normal human perspective. So the pros for the Canon 85 millimeter 1.2, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful photos, right? If another photographer sees this lens on your camera, it is going to level you up in their eyes, right? As long as your photos don't suck. Uh, if a normal person sees this on your camera, I mean, they're gonna think you're legit, but they wouldn't know the difference between the Rokinon. That would have the exact same effect. If you're just going for clout, right? For uh, for the plebs out there, the normal humans, nobody's, no normal person is gonna be able to tell the difference. If they see either one of these things on their camera, that beautiful giant hunk of glass on the front of that thing is just gonna, ooh, you must be a professional, right? Um, but at the end of the day, the 1.2 depth of field is just the creamiest of all of the creamies, right? And those photos are just gonna have a hint, just a slight smidge better feel to them, right? Uh, normal people will not notice, I promise you. No client that is not a photographer is gonna notice the difference in the depth of field, right? Unless they have a side-by-side -side comparison, which why would they? They're not gonna notice the difference between a 1.2 and a 1.4. Um, but it does give you a slight edge over other photographers to have that 1.2. Is it worth the four digit price difference though? That's kind of what we're talking about here today. Uh, cons for the 1.2, it's it's not that much better, right? We're, we're, we're getting into some uh, Pareto principle here, some like 80-20, right? This gets you, the Rokinon gets you 80% there if you want that other 20 percent that's where you shell out the big bucks right it's not that much better it's not night and day better uh it is significantly more expensive that's definitely a con unless you just don't have, like i don't know in what world that wouldn't be a con if 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 money is not a con to you feel free and donate to a boy please you could buy another incredible lens with the savings between this lens and this lens. Um, and then also, this one might sound weird. When you own something this expensive, right? Not many things outside of maybe a diamond ring where $2,000 kind of fits in the palm of your hand like this. When you own something that expensive, just the fact that you own it lives rent-free in your head permanently, right? You... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it's like someone, if you weren't careful, could just whoop, like, okay, nothing to see here. Just like, just the fact that you own it and it's that expensive, it's, it's, you know, that, that in itself could be a con, right? Uh, I mean, really the only con is just money. Like, that's it. You could argue that relatively slow autofocus is a con. It is really not that bad. I mean, are you going to do sports high fast motion stuff with it probably not you you could you'd be testing you'd be right on the edge of like the capabilities of the autofocus in this i'm not saying you couldn't do it um if you like a challenge that'd be a good challenge for you but you're probably not going to do it you're probably going to stick with uh, portraits and uh, slow moving objects with this one All right so now let's talk about the 8514 from the rokinon also huge, beautiful piece of glass, solid, all metal. Focus problem is still the same as the more expensive one, though the more expensive one is a little quicker in the focus category. It's also weather sealed, shallow depth of field, relatively slow focus compared to other lenses. Um, but again, if a regular person sees this lens or sees the photos that come out of this lens, right? This, these, either of these lenses both have kind of a presence that commands, right, some authority and respect from clients, non-photographers, and with other photographers, right? It's just a massive piece of glass, like on both ends. They're both just huge pieces of glass. And when you see that huge piece of glass, I mean, you, you know, if you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. But at the end of the day, 
the Rokinon, you just need to stop and ask yourself, am I doing photography to get great photos? Or am I doing this to look like I'm getting great photos, right? Hint, a lot of people won't admit this, but they just like looking the part, right? Hopefully those of you watching aren't those type of photographers in the skateboarding world growing up, we would call those posers, right? I mean, either way, you can look the part with this, but I go away. Like, if you're trying to look the part right now and you hope to become a good photographer, stay young grasshopper. We will teach you. But if that's your only intention to look like a good photographer, go away. Go away. Go away now. No, it's okay. You can stay. You can, you can buy the lens through the link. <laughs> I will use you. You can look the part and it will be good for me. So anyways, if you are into taking great photos, the Rokinon will do that, right? All right, so with all that nitty gritty out of the way, we got two lenses here. Let's take some quick photos and compare. 1.2. Pretty quick, ask me, not the fastest, but again, that depth of field is wild. Right. Same deal, pretty snappy. Looks pretty good to me. So that gives us some comparison right there between the autofocus on these two lenses. We got some comparison on the photos. We will take a look at those right now. All right, so here we are with our comparison photos. So we've got our 85 mil F all the way up to f16 that's good starting right there is our 85 1.2 all right so we're going to take our 85 1 for rokinon versus our 84 first comparison rokinon at 85 1.4 canon 885 1.2 let's take a look and see what these two look like all right so we it's not that different like i said clearly wide open the cannon is sharper obviously like we go down to 300 percent it's pretty obvious that it's sharper at 300 percent but let's not get carried away what are almost every person that are seeing your photos looking at full sized photos now clearly wide open we've got some vignetting going on around the edges but we're talking just sharpness, even at 100%, very hard to tell the difference. There is a difference. I mean, I'm looking at the computer screen. It might be a little more obvious to me than it is to you, but there is a difference. You can start to see it as we zoom into 300%. We get out here to the corners, very big vignetting on the left one, which is the Rokinon in these corners. Back out to 100%. The Canon is just clearly sharper. So let's go and compare them both at 1.4 and see if that gives us any difference here. Let's take a look here and see what we have. All right, so we've got the same image on the left and now we're starting to see the Canon come away a little bit here. Clearly we're sharper at 1.4. The Canon, as you stop up, man, it just gets sharper and sharper and sharper. What does it look full screen? Still same vignetting over here. So sim similar there, but really we're looking at sharpness. Canon wins on the sharpness. Let's look at the F2. At F2, hard to tell a difference here. We still got a little vignetting on the full photo. Um, but when we zoom into 100%, this is what I'm talking about. Look at these two and tell me that the right side is worth thousands of dollars more, right? Let's get into 300%. We've got a hint of a color fringe going on. 
You can see it around these black colors down here on the Rokinon at 300% magnification. We're pixel peeping here, right? This isn't, this isn't reality. This isn't what normal people do. Keep that in mind. Normal people are seeing this and this right here, you're not, you are not seeing a difference. Even at a hundred percent, I can see a difference on my MacBook screen. Yes. But with a little editing, I mean, oof, it is, that is not thousands of dollars different right there. This is at F 2.8. Take a look. Okay. The Canon's still sharper. Um, our, uh, oof, let's look at 300% here. Canon is still taking it. The Rokinon is catching up though at 2.8. It is catching up quite fast here. Uh, you can see the Canon is sharper, um, especially when you look at these two lines right here. And then you still have a little bit of color fringing, but I'm telling you, normal human beings aren't gonna see that. We're getting rid of a lot of the vignetting. All right, now we are at F4. We've got our two F4 images here. Let's take a look. This is where both of these lenses, supposedly, according to the research, hit their sharpest is at F4. We have got rid of all of the vignetting here. And let's take a look at 100%. Ooh, that's good. See, so at full res, I, I would be hard pressed if I didn't know which was which to be able to tell you which was which. I might be able to tell. So it's, it's a smidge more contrasty on the Canon side. Uh, now at a hundred percent, they are looking very, very good. The Canon still wins out. I mean, you know, thousands of dollars more you would expect it to win out. But yeah, nobody is going to be able to tell. I mean, if you're pixel peeping, you can tell. Right at 300%, especially you can look down here and you can tell the difference, but 300%, right? Nobody's pixel peeping. Whenever they get uploaded to Facebook or Instagram or wherever, they're getting compressed. Nobody even has the ability to look at them. But objectively, yes, the Canon is better. I am just a realist, pragmatic, whatever you want to call it. And realistically speaking, no normal person is going to be able to tell the difference because this is, you know, it's, it is, uh, it is different, but it is not thousands of dollars different here. All right. So that is all of the Intel I can get you. Now, should you buy this lens or this lens? You're a human. You can make your own decisions, but if you're on the fence and you feel like you need a professional opinion, let me tell you what I think you should do, all right? Buy the Rokinon if you meet the following criteria. If you do not have infinite money, right, but you want to get amazing portrait shots, or if you do have infinite money and you want to spend it wisely and save it so that you can donate to a person who would love to make more of these videos for you. Or if you have infinite money and you just wanna buy it because you can, right? And if so, feel free to use the links in the description to help out my poor measly, what, what did I say I was? A intern at Smoothie King. Help. Please sir, can I have some more? If you haven't figured out already, the Rokinon, it's not really an 80-20. The Rokinon is going to get you Let's say 90% of the quality for a fraction of the price, right? It is a really solid all around, just great lens. Is the autofocus a little slow? Yes, on both of them, but it's not that much better, right? This one's not that much better. It's not thousand plus dollars better. So if you want great photos and you do not want to spend four figures buy this guy right here, right? It's going to get the job done. And at the end of the day, even a photographer would be hard pressed to tell the difference between the photos that are coming out of either one of these, right? If you're posing people well, if your framing is good, if your editing is good, I promise you, if you got those things down, 
whichever one of these lenses you use is not going to make that big of a difference. Now then, who of you out there should buy the king of the 85s, right? And almost every answer that I can give you for this is assuming that you have money to burn. But I think there is one kind of person out there that may not fit the infinite money category. And I still think that this might be the right lens for you, right? So the hardcore professional portrait photographer, meaning you are making a living and your main type of photography is portrait photography. And maybe you have been using a this lens or the Rokinon, or maybe you've been using another 85, maybe a 1.8. Um, and maybe let's say you either want to up the quality with the 1.2 or maybe you're missing some shots, right? Let's be honest. The autofocus is not as good, right? It's almost as good, but it's not as good. So maybe you're missing some shots, right? And uh, that rare occasion when the Rokinon isn't cutting it for you, say you're shooting a wedding or something and it just gets it a hair out of focus, just that slow autofocus is just right there and it's made you miss some shots, right? Would it would it'd be rare. I wouldn't think that would be very common, but it is possible. Um, or maybe you do a lot of candid style portraits, right? Where you've got your subjects moving around and laughing and that type of stuff, right? In those cases, um, obviously the image quality is going to be better with the Canon, but in those cases where you may be missing some shots and it's your livelihood there and you gotta get the shots, the Canon 85 millimeter 1.2 may get you those bangers, right? Those just mm, perfect shots, eyeball, crisp, right in focus, right? That you can sell on a six foot canvas that just takes you above and beyond all the photographers in your area, right? That, that would be the person specifically, right? Anybody who just has money, plenty of money, obviously get the better lens, like, and, and use the links. So you help me out, right? I love you. You do that for me because you love me too. But in the in the specific instance where you're not made of money, but it is your job and you're just, mm, you just, let's say the last four or five shoots, you've just missed some amazing shots that if you'd have got those, man, those would have sold a 17 foot wall painting, right? To the client. Well, I think it might be worth it to upgrade, right? Because you can justify it. Not only is it a tax write-off, but if you're getting those sellable photos, it's going to pay for itself, right? That, that would be the person who I would say should go for the 85 1.2. And then all of you out there who are just gear nerds who want the best of the best. There you have it. That is all I have for you on the Rokinon 85 1.4 versus the beast, the Canon 85 1.2. So that's all I have. I love you. I hope you had a lot of fun with me here. Um, use your little uh, pinky finger on that subscribe button, shall you? And if you like this video, <laughs> use your left thumb and click that like button. And if you didn't like it, use your left thumb again and double click the dislike button. And if you are in the market for either one of these lenses, uh, you know, obviously like every other YouTuber on the planet, I get a couple bucks if you buy them through the affiliate links down there. So feel free and help me out if you're feeling like a kind and generous person. Um, and if you're the rich boy out there that's got all the monies, right? And just wants to buy multiple of both of the lenses, you can do that too and use the links. I won't be mad, I promise. You, you flex your baller status, bro. I am okay with that, all right? Well, anyway, like I said, that's all I have. I love you, bye-bye now. Hey, hey, don't go anywhere just yet. Hang on. Now, I hope you enjoyed the little video we had for you here about these two giant hunks of glass. But just to let you know what I slash we are actually all about here on this channel, it's uh, surprisingly not digital media. Uh, photography and digital media is the content uh, that's just really a vehicle of common ground. Right. A thing that I enjoy that other people enjoy that I just like sharing with the world. Um, but what really goes on behind the scenes here is that we are all about people.
Uh, and if you want to make some friends, crazy thing in this world, right? Uh, and build some online or human life friendships. What does that even mean? Right? With people who also enjoy this type of stuff, uh, feel free to come over and join the Discord. So the link is in the description, like it is with every video that's ever made, ever. Um, and at the time of this recording, it's just starting. So it may be quiet. You may come over there and it just might be me, right? Just hanging out. Um, but one of my real human life passions actually is just bringing people together, just bringing humans together. And yes, you do have to be human to join, right? Uh, but just bringing people together and finding enjoyable stuff to talk and build relationships and friendships around. Uh, so no pressure, not trying to sell you anything, right? Though at some point that probably will happen. Papa got to put food in baby's mouth. You know what I'm saying? But seriously, just come hang out in the discord. Just say hi, share your thoughts, your photos, your ideas, your success stories, whatever it is, man, we want to celebrate with you, right? Uh, and if you have noticed, we don't have the comments turned on. Hmm. Wonder why that is because we want you guys to do all of your chit chatting in our little fun human community that we have going on. So that's all I got for you, right? Hope you are living your life and staying human. Come hang out and just do that with us in the discord here and there, right? We would love to see you. So anyway, that's all I have. Love you. Bye-bye now. Goodbye. We're actually leaving this time. There is no more postscript. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Goodbye. I'll see you later. Hope I hope you're having a good one. Goodbye. Love you.